Welcome to Course Communication Tools and Feedback. In this portion, we will be discussing rubrics. Rubrics are an essential way to give students feedback on their work. They help communicate to students in advance what you expect of them and help them to follow along when they receive their grade and identify areas of growth. To begin creating rubrics in your course, select rubrics from the course navigation menu. If you do not see rubrics in your list, you may need to check your course navigation settings and enable it from there. When we click on rubrics, we have the ability to add a new rubric. If you've already created a rubric and communicated it to students, perhaps as part of your syllabus, you do have the ability to copy and paste into the different boxes that you see as part of this rubric. I should always begin by titling the rubric something that makes sense. For example, if you have a Rogerian essay as part of your course, titling it in such a way that makes sense will make it easy to, for you to find to attach to an assignment. From here, I have the ability to make any changes that I need to my rubric to match what I've already created. Each criteria has a pencil, which allows me to describe the criteria in a quick and easy manner. For example, one of my criteria might be references. Within the long description, I have the ability to tell students specifically what I'm asking for. For example, maybe we're required to have and any other specific criteria I'm looking for when I grade for this particular section. I have the ability to choose how many points that section is worth using the points column. Note that when I do, my ratings box adjusts automatically. It's always best to change the point values before you begin adding the ratings. From here, I can add multiple steps. Most things are not single point, all or nothing, when we use rubrics. By using the plus between the two columns, it's automatically going to give me a number that splits the difference. If that's not what you want, you have the ability to change it. For example, maybe I make this two and a half points, and I say beginning. I communicate my criteria. What does a student have to do to earn this rating on this one section? For example, maybe they had three or more errors. I can again add more levels between there. Meets or proficient. And then maybe full marks would be no errors. If you generally have this number of levels within all of your different criteria, you can duplicate it by using the plus criterion and under duplicate, choosing the row you want to duplicate. It will ask for the new criterion's label. And again, it will bring down those same mark options. You can change it by changing the point value and it will scale the points automatically at the same levels as we had before. Quite often, we don't necessarily want to give just these individual steps. Perhaps if a student had two small errors, but we didn't want to give them just 10 points, we have the ability to include a range by checking the box. This gives us the ability to say 16 points or 12 points, for instance. When we're done with our rubric, we have to save it using the Create Rubric button. It's now listed on our page. We can add rubrics to assignments, quizzes, discussion boards. When we go to grade an assignment that uses a rubric, we have the ability to access it straight from the assignment. We can add this by going to the assignment, finding the assignment that we want to grade with the rubric and using the plus rubric button. 
if you wanted to create your rubric directly on the assignment, you can do so. However, it is important to make sure that you check the box that says that you want to use this rubric for assignment grading. This can be easy to forget. You do have access to all of the rubrics you've created in any course from the Find a Rubric menu. For example, I can scroll to any course that I have access to. And here's the one we just built. But if I come down to another course, I have all of those rubrics that I built there as well. When I find the rubric that I want, I scroll down to the bottom of the box and use this rubric. Now that we've attached the rubric, we can use it to grade. When I go to the speed grader, I have the option to view the rubric as I'm grading the student's assignment. If I need to make the rubric larger, grabbing the three dots on this vertical bar and dragging to the left will help me to split the screen between the submission and the rubric. Not only can I click directly on the different rubric pieces, I have the ability to put the points in to the boxes at the right. To leave comments on students based on what's in the rubric, I have the ability to click the comment box and leave specific information. This helps give meaningful feedback to students rather than just a simple score. Once I've graded all of the sections of the rubric, I can save it and it's automatically calculated the total number of points that the student received. Based on that, I can score the student accordingly. One other way to give feedback for students is the comments. This is available whether you use rubrics or not and allows you to leave comments for students on their overall submission. One nice feature about this is the comment library that's available to you using this bubble to the right. You can add those common comments that we're always making. For example, things like you did not meet the word count, your thesis did not meet the requirements, you lack citations, Adding a new comment is as simple as typing it in and pressing Add to Library. The handy part of this is the Show Suggestions When Typing toggle at the top. When you turn it on, now when I use the Comments box, things that I've typed frequently that I've added to that comment library will show up when I type keywords. For example, when I type citation, it pops up with the option of your work is clear but lacks citations to back up your thesis. This saves you time by not having to type the same comment feedback multiple times. The other options you have include if you are a person who prefers to download student work and re-upload it with your comments, you can use the paperclip icon here to attach the file to return to the student. Once you submit, it will attach the item and return it to the student so that they can access it and make whatever changes they need. Giving students clear, meaningful feedback is helpful in helping them to grow and refine their work as they move throughout their time here at ODU. You can also attach rubrics to discussion boards or quizzes. While quizzes works much the same way, discussion boards are slightly different. We access the discussion board that we want to add a rubric to, and using the three dot kebab at the top right, we choose add rubric. And again, we would want to either build our new rubric, ensuring that we, we check the box for assignment grading, or we can again locate any rubric we have access to in any course we're in by finding it in the list and choosing the appropriate rubric and selecting use this rubric at the bottom.
Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit clt.odu.edu.